Hey guys, I'm Iggy and this is my second attempt at starting my own vlog. So why am I shooting such a random video at 11.30 in the evening? Actually, it's been a while since I last posted uh, content online. So if you, if you don't know, I have an IG page and a Facebook page. I run the page Illustrado. It's my online design portfolio where I post architectural works, uh, interior works, uh, even logo design, layout design. I try my best to share online through those platforms. But actually, ang tagal, ang tagal since my last post because things have been super busy and super hectic at work. It actually takes time for me to come up with stuff to post. 30% of it is me putting in the actual work and 70% of it is me getting over the slump, overcoming my laziness. So why? Why am I doing this right now at such a random hour? This is actually unplanned. Eh? Uh, I, was at, I was talking to my girlfriend and I actually cut her video call short because I told her that we shoot a video right now. And I'm blessed that she supported what I do so there was no problem with it. Anyway, why am I doing this right now? So actually, I've been reading this book. So this is Show Your Work by Austin Cleon. I've heard about this book from two sources actually. So one is Chris Doe who runs The Future. It's a very helpful resource for designers of all disciplines. And the other one is Ali Abdal. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce that right. But uh, he's a YouTuber, if I'm not mistaken. He's a doctor in London, not sure. Anyway, so Show Your Work actually inspired me to shoot this video at 11th. 40 p.m. on the work night because one of the takeaways I haven't finished it yet but one of the takeaways that I just came across is that you don't need to have finished product or you don't need to have anything fancy to start sharing your work and I was thinking about what I can share that doesn't require me too much time to produce. What can I share that it wouldn't take me months in intervals to post? Is there something I do every day that could be worth sharing? So I thought about it and actually one of my habits that I've developed over the years was to read articles on this site called The Z. If you've been my contact on Facebook, if you've followed my page. When I have nothing to post, I actually post the articles that I find interesting. I've formed this habit, one, because it helps me become more aware of what's going on in the architecture and design world. Not just, well, not in the Philippines, but in the whole world. It helps me become more aware of the new advances in design, new advances in technology, new trends. So I just thought about it and I decided na why don't I just share insights about the articles that I read. I think that's simple enough to do. So in the spirit of Heidelin Diaz's triumphant gold medal win in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. So three things about the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Cauldron. So first that it was designed by Studio Nendo, a Japanese-based design studio. Uh, it's a spherical dynamic cauldron meaning that it's not fixed in place, it actually moves. It has a white exterior and it has a reflective metal interior. Second is that the spherical shape of the cauldron it actually represents the sun and the energy it gives. This is in line with their concept, all gather under the sun, all are equal, and all receive energy. Which is actually very beautiful in the sense that it puts all the athletes on equal ground. Especially in the Olympics where sportsmanship and fair play are upheld to the highest standard. And just how, as I mentioned, it's a dynamic cauldron and it opens up and reveals the fire. It represents the energy of the games. They compared it to the blooming of flowers, the sprouting of plants, and the opening of hands uh, up high, especially in the spirit of celebration and sports. And the last thing about the Tokyo 2020 Olympic cauldron is that it's the first cauldron that uses hydrogen 
as fuel. Usually, apparently, cauldrons are typically fueled by propane. But in the spirit of sustainability, they used hydrogen, but specifically from the process of electrolysis. And they claim that this is green hydrogen. I guess this is a more sustainable way of harvesting hydrogen. But the thing is, when you use hydrogen as your fuel, it produces an invisible fire. It's also odorless. So you you can't see it, you can't smell it. So how how do people see the burning flame in the center if it's invisible? They actually spray it with a yellow sodium bicarbonate. And the crazy thing is that they experiment with the angles, the amount of spray, I guess the rate of how they spray it also. And this actually produces the, that flickering when you move fire or they're actually designing the flame. So, so that's a crazy part of it. And it's unprecedented. Who knew that you can go to that extent of design? We're not just designing buildings. We're not just designing logos or graphics anymore. Up to how the flame behaves. Imagine that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Japan is on another level of design. They're just on a level of their own. So those are the three things about the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Cauldron. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. This is very impromptu. Uh, I really don't know what to say right now. But I hope this is something that I get to continue. And I hope that this is something that you get to enjoy. Peace.